There are three ways to validate a column against a list of values. In this video, you'll see how to use each of those methods, learn which method I recommend and why. Here's the scenario. You've got a field in a table and this field can be set to one of a few different values. Anything outside of this list of values is not valid. Let's see an example. I'll use MySQL, but the concept works in many other SQL databases. We've got a cust order table here that stores information about orders that customers have placed. There are a few fields in the table. And let's say there's an order status column to record where the order is in its life cycle. This order status value can have values of ordered, processing, in transit, complete or cancelled. How can we ensure that this order status field can only be set to one of these values and nothing else? The first option is a concept called an enum. An enum is a data type that lets you define the valid values for a column. It's like an enum in other programming languages. It's available in both MySQL and Postgres, but not Oracle or SQL Server. Here is how to do it in MySQL. For this order status column, we define it using the data type of enum instead of varchar. We add a pair of brackets for enum. Inside the brackets, we add the possible values for this column, which are the different status values we mentioned earlier. The enum is now ready. We can create the table. And the table is now created. Let's insert some data. We'll run this first statement, which uses a valid value. We run this and see it is successful. Let's run this second statement, which has a value not in the allowed list. We can see an error in the output here. It says, data truncated for column order status at row 1. So it looks like the statement has failed. It says truncated, so maybe only part of the value has gone in. Let's see what is in the table. We can run this select statement and see only one row. This was the row that had the valid order status value. The second statement did not insert a row. So our enum has worked to limit the values. So why use an enum data type? The logic is built into the table, meaning you have everything you need in the single table. There's no additional tables or objects to use. An enum uses a small amount of storage because the text values that are entered are encoded as numbers, which are smaller than the actual text values. If you're looking at this enum and wondering, hang on, that looks like a check constraint, then you're right. It does. That brings me to option two, add a check constraint. A check constraint is a rule that you can put on your tables to enforce certain rules on your data. You can add rules such as date ranges, number ranges, or lists of values. It's also available in all four of the databases I cover, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and Postgres. Let's see an example. First, we'll drop our cust order table. We can then recreate it, but instead of using an enum, we'll use a varchar field. After the columns are defined, we can add a check constraint. There are two ways to do this, and one of the ways is adding a new line after the last column to define the constraint. We'll call our constraint CK cust order status, then write check, and then our rule. The rule will look like a where clause. We'll say order status, then in, then within brackets we have our list of valid values. These are the same as the enum we saw earlier. Now we have written this, let's run the statement. We can see the table is created. Let's insert some data. We can run the same insert statements as earlier. We run this first statement and it is successful, as it includes a valid value. We can run the second statement with an invalid value. We see an error message at the bottom which says, check constraint CK cust order status is violated. This has happened because we have tried to insert a value that is not in our allowed list. So that's how we add a check constraint. So why use a check constraint? It's available in all four of the major databases, and most likely many others, as check constraints are part of the SQL standard. This means more people may understand what they are and how to use them. It's also part of the definition of the table, meaning all the logic is here in one place and you don't need any other objects. If you want to see some examples of different database designs to solve different problems, check out my database design guides. I've created a range of PDFs on many designs such as an e-commerce website, train booking and Airbnb. Check out the link in the description. The third way to solve this is to use a lookup table. 
A lookup table is a separate table that contains a list of valid values. This table is then linked to your main table using a primary key and foreign key relationship, which enforces the rule that only valid values can be added. It's also available in the four major databases and likely all other SQL databases. Let's see how to implement it. We start by dropping our cust order table. We can create a new table and call it order status. We'll give it a primary key column, which is an integer, and then a column of order status name to describe what the status is. That's all we need in the table. Run this statement and the table is created. Next, we need to define what the valid values are. We do that by inserting some data into the table. The data is now inserted. We can now create our cust order table. However, instead of having the order status as a varchar, we set it to an integer. This will relate to the ID value in the order status table, so we should also rename it to order status ID. Then we can add a foreign key constraint. This will ensure that the values added to this table exist in the order status table, enforcing the rule of only allowing a set of values. Run this statement and the table is created. Let's insert some data. We can run this first statement which inserts an order with a value of processing. It has an ID of 2 because that's the ID of the processing record in the order status table. We can run this and see the statement is successful. Next, we can insert another row. Let's use an order status ID of 6, which is one that does not exist in the order status table. We run this, but we see an error. It mentions that a foreign key constraint failed. This is expected because there is no matching value in the lookup table with an ID of 6. It needs to be one of the values in the table. So why choose this lookup table approach? It's easier to maintain. If you want to add a new value, simply add a new row to the table. You can update existing values by editing existing rows as well. Removing is a little harder as you need to consider existing rows, but there are ways to address that. Maintenance can be done by users of the system as well, if needed. A UI can be built to maintain this list, rather than a developer having to implement an alter table script on a production database for the other options. It's also easier to populate a drop-down list in an application with the list of available values. It's much harder to do this with the other options. So which option do I recommend? I would almost always recommend option 3, using a lookup table. It's easier to maintain, it's available in all SQL databases, and it allows easy population of a UI. You might be thinking, what about performance? You'll need an extra join to this lookup table to get the actual names of the order status. Surely that would slow things down, right? Yes, it is an extra join, but it's not a performance issue you usually need to worry about. Having separate tables for different types of records is the core of relational databases, and they handle this concept very well. You can and should add indexes to the joined columns to help with performance. So you'll probably want to watch this video next to understand more about joins and how they relate to performance. Thanks for watching.